Howdy Spacers, and welcome back to Blank Space Dolls, and happy holidays. I'm back with another collaboration, or should I say, collaboration, where the only rule was we had to use an LOL Surprise OMG doll as a base. Let's take a look at the lineup of participants. This includes I Could Do That DIY, Jackie O, Josephine's Creatures, Mr. Super Customs, Keto's Workshop, and the Dolly Geek. So be sure to check out my friends' videos too to see what they created. After this one, of course. Now let's check out the inspiration for my LOL creation. For this project, I was inspired by Rococo and Baroque style dresses in pastel colors, crystals, pearls, bows, and lace. A fun mix for sure. But before we get into the tutorial, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss any of my future customs. Now let's get to the process of my creation. For my base, I decided to go with the Miss Royale from the Dance Squared collection as she already has a Rococo vibe and I love the pastel colors of her hair and I decided that would save me a little bit of time in styling and not having to reroute because it already went with the theme that I had chosen. And of course, we're gonna use 100% acetone to wipe away the factory paint. We're gonna rinse and rewash her hair and also retwist it and wrap it up in a head burrito to prep for a face up. Starting with the face up, you'll see that I started by sketching out the whites of the eyes and the biggest challenge that I had with this was the face mold itself. Obviously the eyes are quite large and I think that was definitely a challenge for me and I did not want to go with the big rounded eyes and you can see here that I'm kind of reshaping those with my General's white pastel chalk pencil and I am following the original eyeliner line just because that was sculpted on as well so it actually helped me get her eyes a little bit more even but I am narrowing out those eyes just a little bit to give her a little bit more of an expression. To ensure I maintained a cohesive color palette, I decided to take inspiration from her hair colors and incorporate those in her face up. So you can see here I'm going in with my Spectrum Aqua Blend watercolor pencil in Hyacinth, which is a lavender purple, to sketch out those initial lip shapes. And then going in with my Caran d'Ache watercolor pencil in Brown Ochre, I'm going to begin sketching in the lid lines and just small wrinkles that a natural face would have and I don't do this on all of my customs but I feel like because the face was so graphic and large that it needed something to fill a little bit of that space and I was able to get a little bit more detail than I normally would. Then going back in with that Hyacinth watercolor pencil and sketching in the initial eyebrow shape. To begin the initial blushing, I go in with my palette pastels by Jane Davenport in the colors Birthday Suit and begin blushing in the main areas of the face, so on the forehead, the nose, and right on the cheeks, and a little bit on the chin. And then you'll also see I do a little bit on the chest and arms because I know that parts of those may be exposed in the outfit that I'm going to be creating later. Using white to highlight some of those areas and distract from that under eye bag that was created from the original LOL sculpt. Here you'll see I'm starting the second layer and you'll really start to see those colors start to come to life. And going over these colors multiple times is going to be the key to a great face up and you'll see that I'm going in and adding dimension by adding color to the outer portions of her eye while still building up that lavender underneath. Eventually the entire lip will be painted pink but as I said before I do want there to be a cooler undertone under the pink lip color that I chose so building it up this way just gives it a little bit more dimension when you do place the pink on top of it. And then I'll also start sketching in the iris portion of the eye and I decided to also go with the lavender just to keep the color palette consistent. And I actually tried something a little bit different where I'm sketching in an actual open pupil versus doing a black pupil and I just wanted to try that out and see if I liked it and you guys will see in the end it looks very cute. I'll also begin sketching in that ombre effect using my Spectrum Aqua Blend watercolor pencil in Rose Matter and starting with pink at the top and it will eventually fade to the lavender at the bottom and this is again to create that same dimension that I added to the lips. Here you'll see a little bit of a jump and we're actually in layer 3 and all that you missed is I'm continuing to build up those colors a little bit more in each layer adding a little bit more detail, a little bit more depth and adding an ombre to a darker purple at the ends of her eyebrows. Mm -hmm. 
thin to give the eyes that halo effect, I go in with my Spectrum Aqua Blend watercolor pencil in the color Fig, which is a darker purple. And all that's going to do again is add to that dimension of the eye and make it look a little bit darker around the edges. Going back in with the lavender at the bottom portion of the iris to continue that ombre effect. And it's in the fourth layer that you can begin to add the Pearlex powders in Macro Pearl. And I do actually apply the first coat all over the entire face and body, seal that in. And then as I build the layers up, I decide exactly where I want to place it. So on the high points of the face, cheeks, forehead, and nose. Then to finish off the face up, I go in with my Tamiya acrylic gloss and paint the lips. It's finally outfit time. Super, super excited. And I was mostly excited about the fabrics that I decided to use, which was a variety of these pink and purple tulle fabrics and some lace, and also this white trimming. For the bodice of the dress this time, I'm going to be using and altering these patterns created by Moonlight Jewel from her Volume 1 pattern book. And it's actually gonna be the Lolita dress bodice pattern and the T-Bell dress sleeve. And I'm going to be extending that, which you'll see here in a few clips. But first, we've got to measure up the doll to see exactly how long we need the dress to be. So here you'll see I place her next to my ruler, and I'm going to measure about five and a half inches, potentially six, depending on seam allowance. And I will just cut a sheet of standard printer paper to those exact measurements. Then you just want to go ahead and separate those pattern pieces and here you'll just see me making notes so that way I can use them for future reference later when I reuse the pattern pieces. But I will have all the measurements posted on screen for you guys if you want to create one of your own. Now that we have all of our pattern pieces that we need to create the Rococo inspired dress, we can go ahead and start cutting it out of our fabric and I'm actually going to start with the bodice top and sleeves. The main fabric of the dress is going to be this pink lace and I start by cutting out the sleeve pattern that I had originally and then adding two additional long rectangular shapes to the bottom of that pattern piece and gathering those up to create two puffs and a smaller cuff. Here you can see what both of those sleeves look like once the two puffs are added and then you just want to gather the top edge of that before attaching it to the bodice. Speaking of the bodice, we did go ahead and cut out that pattern on the fold of the lace fabric and you can see here I just laid it flat against this iridescent tulle fabric and what you're going to do is sew around the entire perimeter leaving the bottom edge of that open and then you're going to turn this pattern piece inside out so that way you have all clean edges. Here's what that bodice looks like once you've turned it inside out and then I just go ahead and top stitch around the neckline and the back opening of that as well before attaching the sleeve. Once you have both sleeves attached, you're actually going to go ahead and sew up those side seams and the side seam or bottom seam of those sleeves. How cute does this look already? I do wish I had added a little bit more volume to the puffy parts of the sleeve, but it probably would have been too much to gather in there, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now using the skirt pattern that I created, I go ahead and cut out the ruffle and this is where I'm going to use that white lace trim that I talked about just to finish off that edge of the ruffle to add a little bit more detail. Then going back across that top edge to create a gather stitch and with this one you're going to use a wide stitch length so that way you can pull together back stitching at the beginning. And going back across that, you do want to go ahead and stitch double rows of gathering stitches. This is going to reinforce as you pull and create a little bit less tension as you're pulling it across the fabric, but also it will help maintain that ruffle shape. Then you want to cut out that second pattern piece for the skirt, and you'll see here that there's a faint blue line, and that's to the exact measurement of the actual ruffle piece that I cut off of the original piece of paper. And that's to just give you a guideline and make sure that you're placing the ruffle on straight. Then you can go ahead and sew that ruffle on and this is actually where that double row of gathering stitches is going to help you because you can sew straight through the two rows of those stitches and it gives you a straight guideline to follow. 
Then you just want to gather the top of that skirt piece as well and then you actually want to attach it to the bottom portion of the bodice piece. Here's what they look like finally attached and how cute is this? I love the iridescent fabric placed on top of the lace in some of the areas. It just adds a fantastical whimsy to the dress. But of course, a dress this size definitely needs a poofy petticoat. And for that, I'm going to be using this lavender and iridescent tulle fabric. And I'm going to be using the exact same skirt pattern that I just used for the dress in the previous steps, following the exact same steps to create the ruffle, attaching the ruffle to the skirt pattern, doing the double rows of gather stitches. And I'm actually going to gather the top of that as well. But instead of attaching it to a bodice, you're going to actually attach it to this elastic waistband. Here's what those two garment pieces look like complete and I love that the petticoat is a slight purple tone because you can slightly see it underneath the lace which I think adds just a little bit more detail and I do decide to add these massive purple bows even though they're not quite massive but in doll scale they are and then also some purple ribbon lacing around the top portion of the bodice and here's what that looks like and I did go ahead and sew the doll into the dress already before I continue to add any of the other details. Now moving into the hairstyling, as I stated before, I actually kept the factory hair that she came with because I love the color and the theme and also the length of it, but I did wash it and twist it out and that's actually to prep for the next step, which is going to be teasing it all into a matted ball, literally. Yes, I promise this is intentional and it will look great once it's fully done, but this is just to add a little bit of a structured base to go underneath. And you can see I've left the perimeter perfectly twisted up because this is actually the hair that we're going to use to cover up this matted mess. Then you just want to apply a generous helping of hairspray just to give that a little bit more shape. And then you're going to use your hand to sculpt and mold it into a little bit of a smoother ball. Then you just want to continue this technique and adding hairspray and smoothing the hair around the shape that you've just created. It was at this point I noticed she kind of looks like Megamind, but trust the process. We're going to accentuate and shape it a little bit using this ribbon, and this is going to take a little bit of that shape away. Ah, much better. Well, kind of. Uh, we're just going to continue pushing through. Again, trust the process. Adding bows never hurts. And then adding more things to the bows never hurts, even though I do remove this a little bit later. And then you're going to take your metal chopstick and curl these little tendrils around her face. Add a little transition magic and they're done. Super, super excited about this. And I did trim them a little bit because they were a tad bit too long. And some people would call this done, but this is the point of the video where you know you've come to my channel because now I'm going to just add things just because I can. And for those things, I'm going to be adding these fork bows, which I have shown how to do these in a previous tutorial, which I'll link up in the cards for you guys if you're interested in that. And it makes these tiny, perfect little bows. Then for a little extra sparkle, I'm going to go in and add these tiny iridescent AB crystals to her hair. This is definitely one of those subtle, slightly unnecessary details that I probably didn't need to add, but I did anyways. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my 3D lashes. Luckily for me, the original LOL OMG doll came with this awesome fan and I'm actually going to be reusing it by repainting it in my color scheme. After about four layers, you'll get to this opacity and then I'm just going to cut out some of my existing scrap fabric and layering that over the top of this. And then adding some clear fabric tacky glue to attach that fabric onto the fan itself. And of course, to add a little bit more detail and drama, embellishing the entire fan with crystals.
For a little extra added flair, I decided to create this little pink tassel out of thread and attach this little string of beads to the handle. I also went back in and added even more crystals to the fan itself. Now we're moving on to the final detail of the entire outfit and that's going to be the shoes and for that one I'm going to be using the factory shoes that she actually came with but obviously the hot pink is not going to work for this custom. So going back in with that same lavender that I've used throughout the project to paint over that and it does take four coats to get full opacity and this is probably the simplest part of the custom itself. No crystals, nothing crazy was added, just simple pastel pink dots to bring out a little bit of detail on the shoe and that completes them. Now finally we can take a look at the final photos. Introducing my LOL creation, Lady Eloise. I mean, intimidated doesn't describe accurately how nervous I was to attempt working on a new face sculpt, especially right after the Integrity Toys face sculpt from my last video. But I'm quite proud of how she turned out, and I love all the small details I was able to get onto the dress and her eyes the most. Let me know what you think of Eloise in the comment section below and what was your favorite part of the customization process. And be sure to check out the other fun and fantastical creations in this collaboration. I'm trying to decide which one I'm going to watch next. And of course, if you're interested in keeping up with my future creations, or just checking in, or seeing work in progresses, be sure to check me out on Instagram by searching at Blank Space Dolls, where in my world, there's always a blank space. Let's customize it together. Until next time, spacers, see you soon. kind of my jam and then we're gonna go in and add some of these fake what are these called lashes <laughs>